Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching. This video is going to be about having your rifle ready for the fight. Uh, so these two videos that I'm about to play come from an incident out of Mount Horeb, Wisconsin, involving an active shooter threat at a middle school. Uh, multiple police officers responded and two of them we get to see from their body cam footage how they got themselves prepared for this fight uh this first officer uh officer stoddard uh he well you know what i'll just let you see what he does before he ever uh gets on scene so um like most body cam uh footage it starts with no audio whatsoever it's in buffer mode and then it goes to audio so What's going on right now is Officer Stoddard. Um, he is, I believe, working the overtime sh uh, schedule right now. Uh, he is sitting in a parking lot on his cell phone uh, speaking with a, uh, a citizen about a prior call for service. Um, something totally unrelated to uh, what's about to happen. So he's on the phone talking with this citizen, doing a follow-up, and he hears or he sees on his computer screen a little flag pop up for a weapons violation and sees that um, a caller has reported a person uh, hiding in the trees and bushes with a gun at a middle school. So he automatically gets off the phone and he starts to get ready. I think that... Um, once he gets his rifle up and ready, he starts going down the road, um, hits on his uh, computer terminal there that he's en route so that he's not tying up any radio communications and he can hear um, other people responding and stuff like that and then gets to the fight. So um, what, we, what we're about to see right now is after he's already noticed uh, on the screen that you know there's a, uh, a call about a person with a gun spotted outside of middle school um hiding in some bushes so what he's doing he's getting his rifle out of the rifle mount he's going to take the caps off of the sight turn the sight on get it to its preferred brightness danger it up put it between his knees and then we'll proceed to drive to the school. All right. We will skip through some of this. Let's go to uh, first traffic. Comes to a stop. Drop it! Drop it! All right, so... Uh, within a matter of just a couple seconds upon exiting his vehicle, he is able to get his rifle up, aim at the suspect that has a rifle and is actually um, aiming at another police officer there on the scene. He's actually aiming his rifle at the school resource officer. Uh, the two of them are about 50 yards away, and they're kind of circling the school resources officer's um, a cruiser and this officer gets on scene dismounts from his vehicle gets that rifle on target and starts to press shots onto the threat within a matter of just a couple seconds so let's switch to one of the other officers and see what his view looked like so this is Officer Stevens. He was actually uh, at the police department, was going to be going to go to some kind of call unrelated to what's about to happen. And then um, this call came out and he went to work. He does not get his rifle out of the mount and get it ready. Stoddard. 
shots fired. The shots have been fired already. And that's pretty much what his body cam footage looks like for the duration of the event. Uh, we don't get to see really a lot of good uh, imagery from his body cam. Uh, but what we do notice out of his incident here um, is he arrived on scene and shots are being fired. Like there is a gunfight going on and his rifle is not ready for the fight. Uh, he has to get it out, get the sight turned on, has to charge the charging handle to get this rifle in the fight so let me find a good freeze frame on this and um let's talk a little bit more um getting the rifle ready for the fight before you ever get on scene now, obviously, this is not going to work for every single scenario. There's some scenarios where you just won't have this ability to, quote-unquote, uh, pre-stage that rifle or uh, preset that rifle. So, this is for incidents where you receive that call and you're going to have to travel some distance to the scene, right? The best way, I think, to go about ensuring that you have the proper tool for the potential fight, or for the fight, is to get the rifle set up before you ever get on scene. That way, when you arrive on scene, that rifle is ready to rock right now. You don't have to go through the process of getting the rifle out of where it's being stored at. You don't have to flip the protective caps off. You don't have to turn the sight on, select the brightness that you need, charge that rifle, and then try to get into the fight. You may not have the ability to do that once you arrive on scene. Once you arrive on scene and that gun's still in the mount, it's still in the trunk, still in the cargo space, you may not have enough time to go through that whole process of getting it out. And so you won't get that thing out. And if you're going to a high risk call where there is a likelihood of a gunfight or you're going to a gunfight, like there's shots been fired, you want to bring a rifle to a gunfight and you want to bring your friends with rifles to a gunfight. Rifles dominate gunfights. They make them stop a lot sooner than pistols do. So call comes out. It's a high-risk call. There's a robbery in progress. Um, there's a person with a weapon. There's shots fired. Officer needs help. That's high-risk call. High-risk calls can lead to deadly force encounters, can lead to officer-involved shootings. You want a rifle out for those type of incidents. Because if you don't have it out and you don't have it ready, then it's not going to be available to you when it happens. You're just not going to have the time to get that thing out. So the best way to go about that is as soon as you get that call, you get the rifle out and you get it ready. If you're parked, then obviously you can do what this guy does get it out unlock it from his mount charge it up turn the side on get it ready if you're driving if the rifle is in the cab you could go through the process of getting out getting it out and doing stuff with it to get it ready while you're driving should you be driving and doing that at the same time no probably not it doesn't take anything just to come to a stop, pull off to the side of the road, 
get the rifle out of the mount, danger it up, and then continue to proceed to the call. It only takes but just a few seconds to do that. Now, what if your rifle is in the trunk? What if it's in the cargo space of the SUV? Well, then obviously you're going to have to stop, get out, go to the rear of the vehicle and to get that thing out. And then danger it up, put it up there in the cab with you, and then proceed to the call. And then when you get on scene and you dismount from the vehicle, your rifle is ready to go. Hell, if you are arriving on scene and you start taking fire, you right then and there can start returning fire through the windshield with a rifle. And a rifle is more advantageous than a pistol. Why do we not see this type of tactic more often? In most of these officer-involved shooting videos that you see, you see what uh, we just saw with Officer Stevens. Officers arrive on scene, then they get their rifle out, they try to turn the side on, charge the rifle, get it in the fight. There's videos where I've seen officers grab the rifle, get it out, they'll charge it, get it ready to fight, and they'll bring that rifle up to sight it, and the protective caps are on, and they got to flip the caps off, or the sight is turned off, and they've got to press the buttons to make it turn on, and then adjust it to the brightness uh, where they need it. That eats up time. A lot of time. It eats up a lot of valuable time, and it doesn't make you an effective fighter. It can give the enemy that advantage over you because you're not ready for the fight. It can give them that, that one extra second to be able to get the drop on you because your sight has a cap on it or it's not even turned on and you can't even aim the rifle at them accurately. So why do we see this so often? I think it goes back to training. When you look at firearms training for rifles, it is all done on a flat range and it does not involve generally a whole lot of moving. If there is any moving that is going on, then there is usually some bounding going on, some, some small unit tactics going on where you're moving from cover, providing cover, etc. What we generally do not see is the before stuff, before you start shooting. Where's this rifle coming from? And so in a rifle class, all the students are on the shooting line with their rifles in their hands or slung across their chest and then they start the training. That is unrealistic because you're not going to be starting with a rifle in your hand. When you look at firearms training for a pistol and you are standing on the line and that pistol's on your side and fight command comes and you start shooting the target because you got the handgun right there on you, that's realistic because you're going to be walking around in your everyday life with a pistol on you. So you are able to quickly reach down, unholster pistol, bring it up, acquire sights on target, press trigger, put holes in target. That's realistic. It is not realistic to be starting with a rifle in your hand. With a few exceptions. You're on an assignment where you're walking around with the rifle on you. Say, for example, you're a part of a special team, like a SWAT team. SRT, CRT, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that's realistic that you're walking around with a rifle, so if the fight happens, you get to start with that rifle. If you're on some type of um, special patrol kind of thing, like um, I know in New York City, um, 
there for a while after the terrorist attacks, um, which they have like normal like foot patrols for police officers up there. Like they're they've got beats where officers just walk around in the city. Um, they were having some of those guys with rifles on them, and they would just walk around with rifles. So something like that would be kind of a realistic approach to being able to s start a fight with a rifle on you. The majority of the time, it is going to start with you having to get that rifle from somewhere. And that's either going to be in a rifle mount in the cab of the vehicle, or it's going to be from a rifle mount in the cargo space of the vehicle, or maybe of a trunk, or it's going to be from a rifle case of some sort uh, from the trunk of a vehicle or the cargo space of a vehicle. That is going to be, like I said, the most realistic approach to getting this rifle and getting it into the fight. You have to get it from somewhere. It just doesn't start in your hands like a pistol starts right there on you, right? Like you don't get the start with the rifle like you get the start with the pistol. You have to get that rifle from somewhere. And so the rifle training classes don't incorporate that. The rifle classes start with you having the rifle in your hand. It's already there. It's already dangered up. It's already got the sights turned on. So I think that that is creating a training scar for our officers. Because they are not training for the realistic approach. They have to get that rifle out of its holding spot, flip the caps off, turn the side on, charge it, maybe pull the sling out of its stowed position and getting that rifle into the fight. So, a good rifle class, in my opinion, should incorporate drills where the student has to get the rifle from its spot, whether it's in a rifle mount in the cab of the vehicle or it's in the trunk or cargo space of a vehicle. If the rifle is going to be stowed in a configuration where there's protective caps on the sights, then those caps need to be on there. If the sight itself is electronic and it's going to be in the off position, then they need to start that drill with that sight in the off position. It doesn't need to be pre-gamed, right? It needs to be like it is in real world conditions. So they start the drill with the rifle and whatever holding spot it's going to be at. And so that's going to need to incorporate them being in a vehicle, right? Like you're going to have to roll the cruiser onto the range itself. Start this drill, students in the driver's seat, boom, fight. Or get ready for the fight. Student gets the rifle from its holding spot, disengages any um, protective covers on the site, turns the site on, adjusts the site to where they need it. If they have to unbunch or uh, undo the sling to get it on uh, or to make it loose then do that charge the handle get that thing dangered up and then they can go up to the shooting line and begin putting holes in target that in my opinion um, I think is the better realistic approach to training officers on how to be more effective in getting their rifles into the fight. Because this arriving on scene and then trying to get the rifle ready and into the fight, it's just not working. We either see officers just don't get the rifle out at all, they neglect to get it out because things are happening so, happening so rapidly, so quick, and it's so dynamic they know they just don't have time to get that rifle out and start messing with, it, messing with it right then and there. They get out and they go to their pistol. Or we see uh, officers getting their rifles out and then we are seeing that under stress they may be forgetting to charge the rifle, they may be forgetting to turn the side on and they are losing precious seconds and they are giving the enemy an advantage over them. So, 
incorporate into your training getting your rifle ready for the fight before you ever get on scene. Take just the few seconds that it takes to get that rifle dangered up and then start driving to the scene so that when you get there and you dismount from that vehicle, that rifle is ready for the fight right now. If you like what you hear and see, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense, thank you for watching.